Minglawa. In the previous videos, we talk about KNN, uh, key nearest neighbor classifier, and logistic regression classifiers. I guess by now you are familiarized yourself with these classifiers, KNN and logistic regression. Right? If not, I would suggest you to revise these videos before we move on to support beta machine. Support beta machine is another simple algorithm where almost uh, yet almost everyone in the machine learning field has used it before. All right, SVN is mainly used for classification. Sometimes we call it as a support beta classifier (SPC), but it can also be used for the regression. All right, this one we call it as SVR, support beta regression. Okay, now let's talk about the support beta machine. What does a support beta machine do? All right. The objective of support vector machine is to choose a decision boundary, or here, sometimes we call it as a hyperplane, that distantly classify the data points. So let's uh, visualize with the 2D features, right? Two dimensional space. Okay. If you look at the figure A, each green line is trying to separate the data point into two class blue color one and then red color one. All right. So the 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 SVN. What does the SVN do? Is SVN find the best hyperplane where it can actually maximize the margin, right? What do I mean by margin? Margin is the distance from the hyperplane to the nearest points from the each class. Okay. So if you look at the figure B, all right, our optimal hyperplane is shown in the green color, and then the distance from the both blue and then uh red color has been maximize right so in other words svn trying to find a hyperplane that maximize the distance from the nearest point from both class this is how the svn works right so depending on the problem that how does the svn try to solve we can actually simply classify that into linear svm and kind of svm Linear SVM find a straight line that can split the data, especially in the two dimensional space. All right. So this method work well for the linear, uh, linearly separatable data. Okay. So in this example, the data are linearly separatable. All right. So if the data is not linearly separatable, this is where the Garnet SVN is useful. Garnet SVN project these features into another space where we can actually linearly separate the, the linearly uh, separate the data into two different classes or more than that all right so this is about the kane svm okay. so kane svm is workable for nonlinear data so using this kana we can see that svm actually can work for both linear data and non-linear data that is one of the reasons svm is most popular algorithm in the classification problems all right so how do we implement this linear svm in the you are uh, using the sklm okay so in the we first import the sklm or spm package of course right so from this sklm or spm package we have both linear spc and spc for performing the binary and multi-class classification all right so let's start with linear spc we first import the linear spc and as usual we initialize a new variables before fitting them into uh, using the training data to train them all right so use a fit to train the training data then we can calculate the accuracy score using the testing data or training data, right? Like the logistic regression or KNN that we have discussed, we can use the matrix package to measure the coefficient matrix or to calculate the um, precision, you know, recourse or the evaluation parameters of the classifier. Okay. All right. So we this linear SPC works well for the linearly separatable data. For the nonlinear data, how can we solve it? Don't worry, we have another method called SPC, support beta classifier SPC. This SVP is workable for both linear and nonlinear by setting the kernel values. All right. So if you set the kernel to be a linear, this work pretty quite similar to the linear SPC. The only way different, the only thing different is the implementation, how you implement it. All right. So if 
if the data is not linearly separatable, uh, we can use the other kernels like polynomial kernels, radial basic function, or sigmoid function. All right, polynomial kernel is pretty expensive. So in the predicate use, we set and use the polynomial kernels. Same one is mainly used for the neural network. So by default, this for support beta classifier, we usually use the RBF. All right, in SKLN, RBF is a default value. If you don't set any value for the kernel, as RBF will be used. So here, let's see how it works, All right? Uh, we set the kernel to be an RVF, and then we, here comes to the hyperparameter C and gamma. Right? Hyperparameter C is uh, to regularize the to control the regularization effect, like what we have discussed in the regression and logistic regression. Right? Gamma, the value car gamma, especially for the RVF kernel, controls the smoothness of the boundary. Right? If you decrease the gamma value, you can make the boundary smoother. Okay, so for this example, we use C equal to 1 and gamma equal to 1. And when we measure the performance, our training accuracy is very high, which is 1, right? But when we test this model into a new data set, we only have the 63%. This shows that this model is pretty good for the same data, but it is not generalized enough to predict for the end same data, right? So... In other words, this is an overfitting process. How can we address it? Of course, we have to fine tune the hyperparameters. By reducing the value of C, it increases the strength of regularization because C is inversely proportional to the strength of regularization, right? So in this example, we reduce C to be 0 0.1. That means we increase the uh, strength of regularization. And then we set gamma value to be scale. All right, skill is a default value. If you don't set any one, any 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 parameters, gamma will take as skills. But if you set the skills, how does the gamma value is calculated? Gamma is calculated by one divided by number of features time variance of the data. Okay, this is how you calculate the gamma value. All right. So by setting c equal to zero point one and gamma to be skill, this is the result we got it. Our training accuracy has reduced to eighty eight percent. However, testing accuracy has increased to 91%. Right? So obviously, we can see that our model is not as good as previous one for the training data, but it is more generalized. All right? It's generalized enough that when we test on a new data set, the performance is, has uh, improved. Okay? We got the 91%. All right? So we have more confidence that our model will be able to um, classifying correctly for the new and same data. Right. So here, so far, we have covered like three basic classifier. Logistic regression first, and then followed by KNN classifier, and today is a SPN classifier. Logistic regression and KNN classifier mainly work for the linear data. SPN work for both linear and non-linear, like what I explained earlier, right, by setting the kernel. Okay. So, obviously, because of this reason, the SPN can, can uh, handle both linear and non-linear data, this method has been used widely, all right? However, um, there are problems, actually, you can use a logistic regression or KNN classifier, depending on the problem that you are trying to solve. So, my suggestion is SPN is good, all right, but use it in a wiser way, okay? Which problem you are trying to solve? how you are going to address this. In the next videos, we are going to talk about the other classifiers, which are the mainly on the tree-based classifiers. Okay. Thank you very much. I will see you all for the next videos. Thank you.